What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again with the Odroid Go Advance and today I'm going to show you how to get it all set up. I'm going to show you how to install the operating system to the SD card and get some games up and running on the Go Advance all from a Windows PC. We do not need any Wi-Fi to do this and it's a fairly easy process. Now I've created a couple videos on the Odroid Go Advance like assembly and customization. If you're interested in checking those out I'll leave links in the description but before you even get started here, you will need to have your Odroid Go Advance assembled. So this is basically a starter video. I'm going to show you how to get up and running with games on your Odroid Go Advance using nothing but the SD card, the Go Advance, and a Windows PC. So first things first, you're obviously going to need an Odroid Go Advance and it'll have to be fully assembled. Now this one here might look a little different than yours, that's because I've painted it and added different buttons, I got a full video on that. And you're going to need a micro SD card, I'm just using a 64 gigabyte silicon power, these are cheaper to get. But I have tested up to a 256 gigabyte card in this unit and it does work in the Go Advance. And the final thing we're going to need is a Windows PC or laptop. I'm going to be using Windows 10 for this tutorial, but Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10 will work. So if you're ready to get your Odroid Go Advance up and running, let's move over to our PC now. Alright, so let's go ahead and get our SD card set up for the Odroid Go Advance. First thing you're really going to need right off the bat are some games. I can't tell you exactly where to get them, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find everything you need. They are there. I've got all the games I'm going to be using in this video in a folder on my desktop called ROMs. I have some Atari 2600 all the way down to SNES. If I go into each one of these, I just have a few games to make it quicker and easier to transfer over for this tutorial. But if you want to add the full ROM set per system, you can do that as long as you have enough room on your SD card. This tutorial that I'm making is obviously based on a Windows machine. I'm running Windows 10 here, so everything you see in this video applies to Windows 10. Now it's time to download the software we're going to need. I'm going to open up a browser. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. First thing we really need to do is decide which image we're going to be using. There's EMU Elect, Retro Arena, Botocera, and you can get the base image from here. Now, unfortunately, as of making this video, this is the first release for the base image, and a lot of people will run into issues with games not showing up in this base image. This was released on February 6, 2020. If this is any higher, that problem may be fixed, and you can go ahead and use the base image if you'd like to. But for this video, I'm going to be using the Retro Arena. And this tutorial applies to the Retro Arena, Botocera, or the base image. So we're going to go in here on the forum, Link for this is in the description. We're going to find the download link. And I'm going to download it. We're also going to need to download an application to allow us to flash this to an SD card. I'm going to be using Etcher for this. It works for Mac, Windows, or Linux, but I'm going to be using the Windows Portable version. Once both of my downloads are finished up, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. So we're now ready to flash the image for our Go Advance. I've placed my SD card in my PC using a USB card reader. The Retro Arena image does need to be extracted because it was uploaded in a RAR format and Etcher just won't extract it for us. So we're going to right click and we're going to extract to its own folder. You might need to download and install WinRAR or 7-Zip for this. Link for that will be in the description. So now that we're finished extracting, we have a new folder here. With the image, we need to install to the SD card. This is the RARC1, Release Candidate 1. This might change in the future. So now it's time to start up Etcher. We're just going to double click. From within Etcher, we're going to select Image, and we're going to find that image we just extracted. Mine's on my desktop. Odroid Go Advanced, the RARC1. And we're going to choose the .img, the disk image file. From Select Target, make sure you have the correct SD card chosen. I'm using a 64 gigabyte card with a USB card reader. You don't want to flash this to an internal drive or an external drive you may have connected to your PC. So make sure you have the correct SD card chosen. Click Continue and Flash. Etcher's going to go ahead and take care of everything for us. It's going to flash this image to the SD card. You might get a couple pop-up warnings, just close them down. When this is finished flashing, we need to move over to the Odroid Go Advance, insert the SD card, and power it up for the first time. But we will come back to the PC so we can easily transfer ROMs over to our SD card. Okay, so let's go ahead and boot up our Odroid Go Advance for the first time with this freshly flashed image. I'll just insert my SD card, press the power button, 
and we'll have to wait a little bit. It needs to expand the file system and get everything ready, but then it'll boot right into Emulation Station. Now, once it's booted up, you're going to notice we don't have any games. This is a base image, and we need to add games. If you own a Linux PC or a Raspberry Pi, you can actually take the SD card out of here and transfer the games directly on your Raspberry Pi as long as you're running a Linux operating system or your Linux PC. Unfortunately, with no third-party application, Windows will not allow you to transfer games over to this SD card unless you use a Wi-Fi dongle on the Odroid Go Advance and transfer the games over SSH or Samba. But there's a way around this. We're going to be using a third-party application by Paragon on our Windows PC that will allow us to plug the SD card into our PC and access the Linux file system so we can transfer our games directly on our computer. It's super easy to use and it's going to be much quicker than using SSH or Samba to get all of your games over to the SD. So let's move back over to our PC. We're going to get that application installed so we can easily transfer games to the SD card. So let's go ahead and get our games transferred over to our SD card. Like I mentioned, if you plug your SD card in right now, like Windows sits, you will not be able to access the Linux file system. We just can't access the ext4 file system that the SD card is formatted in. So we're going to be using a third-party application by Paragon. This is known as the Linux file system for Windows. We're going to download it here. Now the only drawback to this is it's a 10-day trial, but I've run into the issue where I had to delete it, and reinstall it. So that's how I've been using it. We're going to go ahead and install this. Make sure you read through all of this. We'll click next and finish. We now have the Linux file system for Windows installed. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it, start it up. As you can see, it hasn't detected any file system. So I'm going to plug my SD card in right now, and the SD card I'm talking about is the one we just flashed with the Odroid image. As you can see, it's now detected it. It's known as root, and my drive letter is G. Yours might be different. From the drop down here, we can go to settings, mount automatically. I leave this on, and we want to mount volume in read and write because we need to write those games to it. We'll click save settings, and from the Windows File Explorer, we can now actually access that root drive, the SD card. Inside of here, you'll see a bunch of different folders, but we're looking for ROMs. We're going to open this up, and as you can see, here's our ROM directory. This is where we're going to be placing our games. I'm going to snap this over to the right-hand side, and I'm going to open up the games that I have on my desktop. So if we want to add some games for, let's say, Atari 2600, we'll just grab some of those games, place them right in the Atari 2600 folder. Let's transfer them over. Same thing with N64. My N64 games, we'll find N64 on the root. This is our SD card. And we'll transfer them over. Now, don't go unplugging this SD card. We need to unmount it for the changes to take effect. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and transfer all of my folders over because they are named correctly. As you can see, Neo Geo, Neo Geo, and that's really all I need to do. Take my game folders, place them on my SD card. They're going to transfer over. When this is finished, we need to unmount that SD card. We cannot just unplug it. All right, so now my games are transferred over. I'm going to close these windows down, and we'll unmount this SD card. You can do it from right here or the bottom right-hand corner, this little eject icon. It's now unmounted. We can remove it from the PC and move back over to the Odroid Go Advance. We now have games on our SD card, and we're ready to play our handheld. So I've just placed my micro SD card back in the Odroid Go Advance and turned it on. I'm just going to wait for this first boot here. And once it's started up, we should see our systems listed here. As long as you added a game for that system, it should show on the main menu. And you're basically ready to play, but there's a few things that I kind of wanted to go over. If you want to get into the main menu, you can press the Start button. The right-hand side middle button on the Odroid Go Advance will bring us into the main menu. 
From here, we have Display Settings, Scraper, Sound Settings, UI Settings, Game Collection Settings, Other Settings, Configure Input, and Quit. If we go to Quit, we can shut down the system, but it'll automatically boot back up. We need to shut it down from the button on the top of the Odroid Go Advance. I'm just going to go in here and start a game real quick. I'll show you how to exit back into Emulation Station. When you're in game, all you need to do is press the far left hand menu button at the bottom of the Odroid Go Advance. That'll bring us back into the Emulation Station menu. Now the way these images are set up, when you start the game back up, it'll bring you right back to where you left off. So it pretty much creates a save state for you automatically. And that's pretty much it. You can now start playing your favorite retro games on the Odroid Go Advance. Now there's more stuff that I'd like to go into detail with, but this was just a basic install to get you up and running and start playing with the Go Advance. Keep an eye on the channel because I will have a few more tutorials coming up in the next few days, like scraping your images, the box art, game art, and video snaps. There's actually a few ways we can go about this. We can do it directly from the unit itself if we have a Wi-Fi dongle. Yes, unfortunately, the Go Advance doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth built in, so you will have to use a USB Wi-Fi dongle, or we can do it from our Windows PC directly to the SD card using a third-party app. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, I will have that video coming up very soon. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I really appreciate you watching and hope you have your Odroid Go Advance up and running. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always... Thanks for watching.